Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I went from this image to that image in Photoshop. All right, my name is Philip and let's jump right into Photoshop. So the first thing I'm always doing is copying my background layer by hitting Command and J on the keyboard. And as we see down here now, we have a copy of the background layer. Awesome. So first thing I'm going to do, probably, um, normally I'm not doing that in this order, but whatever, I'm just going to go to Filter and then Nick Collection and Color Effects Pro. And that is a free plugin. You can download it. It's free. Free stuff is great if it's free. Free. So once this has loaded uh, words, once this has loaded up, I'm just looking for one particular filter which is called tonal contrast. So holy damn, that takes a while. Do it. Okay, there we go. Tonal contrast and it's already activated. There we go. So I cropped the image before, but that's why we have this kind of weird edges around here. Just just pretend you don't see that. It's actually not there. And you see what the tonal contrast does? It just adds a certain crispness to the whole image, if that is a word. So let's just hit okay. And then wait a second, and probably I'll bring you back once it's done, guys. And we're back, and the plugin has decided to finish up on that. Awesome. So let's look at the before and after, before and after. And you see, especially in the background right here, in the, let's call it mountain region, there's quite a difference between the for before and the after. So, and that is actually exactly where I want this effect to be visible. I don't want it in the foreground because it does something weird to the grass, and I don't really like that. So let's pop a layer mask on it by clicking on the little Japanese flag symbol down here for adding a layer mask. And I'm going to hit Command and I on my keyboard, which will hide the whole effect. We have a black layer mask. And if I press B on my keyboard now, I'll get the brush tool. And with white, I can now bring the effect back wherever I feel like. So I'm going, I'm going to go lower words. I'm going to go with an opacity of, say, 70%. Uh, I'm just going to bring back the effect back here in this mountain area. Okay, including the houses. Why not? Okay, I like that. Next thing, the sky is obviously far too bright for me. I mean, if you have watched my videos for a while, then you know I always love to go for a nice, dramatic, dark sky. So let's just use a simple curve adjustment layer right here and bring it down to maybe something like, like that is not bad. Cool. Same thing, I'm going to hit Command and I on the keyboard, which will hide the effect everywhere. Now with a white brush, I can just bring the, back, the effect back wherever I feel like. So with an opacity of 50%, not 100, so you can see here, opacity 50, and I got that by just hitting the number 5 on the keyboard, and I get an opacity of 50%. Okay, let's bring that down here, and maybe in this area a little bit as well. Okay, well that's not bad at all. You can always bring it like down even further if you feel like later. So the other thing I would like to do, so we have these mm, crops, I guess, in the foreground. And while they are already quite blurred, there are still areas which are not too blurred. For example, the ground here, which you can see through the grass. So what I would like to do, oh, don't do this, Philip. Don't, uh, <clears throat> don't just start painting randomly on your, hey, where is it here? <laughs> on your layer mask. Okay, so I want to have these areas blurred as well. And there's one very simple way of doing that. So first thing, I'm going to hit Command, Alt, Shift, and E on my keyboard, which will create something which is called a stamp visible. And in other words, it is just copying everything that you can see onto a new layer, which we have right here now. And I'm going to go and, uh, may not be necessary, but I'm going to convert that thing to a smart object. So whatever filter I apply to it right now, I can change later. That is quite nice. So let's go to Blur and Gaussian Blur. And once we are there, I have to just pick um, a blur I like, for example, something like, maybe something like this. Yeah, that doesn't look bad. Let's hit OK. And you see, we can now go in if I wanted to, and I could change the, the blur we have just applied to something else if I didn't like it. Okay, now I'm going to create a layer mask by hitting the little, 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 little layer mask symbol down there. I'm going to hit G on my keyboard, which will bring up my gradient tool. Okay, and now with the gradient tool and the black color selected, I'm just going to go... I go the other way around. We're going to hit Command and I first to hide the effect everywhere. And now with the white color, we're going to bring the effect back where we want it. So now we have blurred, we have kind of made the effect visible gradually, increasingly from here to there. Okay, let's look at that if we go a bit in. So if you look at the before, everything is quite clear when it comes to this ground right there. And now it's a bit more blurred. I kind of like this effect. It just makes it a bit softer and takes the attention away from these hard kind of foreground structures right here. Okay, well that's not bad. And uh, let's look at, uh, look at the sky a bit closer and then we have to look at the sheep as well. Okay, when I say working on the sky, then I have spontaneously decided to make that a lot darker. We can easily do that uh, if we just go back to our curve adjustment where we actually worked in the sky initially anyway, and we just drag it down further to maybe something like 
that is not bad. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to the layer mask and just try to make it a bit bigger for the brush, <laughs> try to make it a little bit less visible on the mountain region itself, so with an opacity of 20%, and the black color I'll just paint in right here. It's actually an interesting effect right there. Maybe not that strong here, something like that. Okay, quite happy with this. So now what we have to do, or what I would like to do is at least, I would like to give the, the whole grass area here a bit of a harder feeling. So in a moment it's quite soft and fluffy, you know, I have some some happy little sheep, happy, happy little sheep in the grass, Bob, refer, uh, Bob Ross reference. Um, so what I can do is I'll go up and do a stamp visible by hitting Command, Alt, Shift, and E on the keyboard. I'll have all the shortcuts, of course, down in the description as usual. And once I have done that, I'm going to change its blending mode from normal down to overlay. And that makes things look really kind of weird. So the next thing we need to do is to create a hue saturation layer and bring the saturation down. It's down to an, uh, to an extent where we think it looks good enough. Maybe something like this. Okay, that's not bad. Let's clip this to the layer beneath by the command and G, and let's adjust that actually a bit more to, actually we can go all the way down, there you go. Okay, that is not bad. So if we look at the before and after that, so we have a quite quite nice and uniform greenish, yellowish uh, grass area right here, and now it looks a lot more contrasty, a lot more vibrant, and not as friendly anymore, right? I kind of like that. But I don't like it everywhere, I don't like it in the sky, and I don't like it in the background. So let's select that layer, put a layer mask on top of it, hit B on the keyboard to get the brush, make it relatively large, and uh, either I hit Command and I now and paint it away, or I'll, no, I'm just going to stick like that. I'm going to remove from the sky with an opacity of, say, 70%, and I'll just start to paint over it, like that. Just like that, and with an opacity of maybe 30%, I'll go over the sheep area down here as well, just a little bit. Okay, that's not bad, I like that a lot. Good, let's see what we have to do next. So how about we add some nice glamour glow? So we could either now create a stamp visible, or we have to do that anyway, so let, let's just do it. Command, Alt, Shift, and E on the keyboard. So either we go now to uh, Filter, Nick Collection, and then the Color Effects, and we do a nice glamour glow there, or we just change the blending mode from this layer from Normal down to Soft Light and apply a Soft Orton effect by using that layer in the Soft Light mode. <laughs> go to Filter, go to Blur, and go to Gaussian Blur. And that depends, of course, entirely on the look you feel like, or the, the look you want. But uh, if you just go back and forth with your radius of a Gaussian blur, essentially, then you'll see that it has the different effects. Okay, so just pick one which suits you best and then go with that. So I'll go maybe with something like that. And what this does, unfortunately, always as well, is uh, it brings back some of the colors. Okay, so the stuff is a lot more vibrant now, which is not necessarily what I feel like in that image. So um, we're going to have to get rid of this, but otherwise it uh, gives the whole thing a bit of a soft feeling again, especially back here in the clouds, and I kind of like that, okay? So let's pop a layer mask on it, and just by hitting the layer mask symbol, and we're not going to invert that, we're just going to hit brush, brush on my keyboard, I'm going to hit B on my keyboard, well, maybe if it happens, brush it happens as well, who knows? So with black and an opacity of say 50%, I'll just get rid of the effect where I don't want it. And I don't want it too strong, maybe 30%. I don't want it too strong right here, okay? Because I don't feel like it's completely necessary. And maybe also not that strong back here, something like that. And let's just get rid of it a tiny bit there, otherwise we are drawing too much attention onto that mountain area right there. Okay, maybe that's not bad at all. Uh, we could also, with an opacity of 20%, just remove it a little from the front here. And I think we are ready, set, good to go. Okay, and now let's do the thing where we have to get rid of some of the color again. So I'm just going to create a hue saturation layer. I'll clip it to this layer where we have the color in, basically. And I'll just hit the little tiny symbol here to do that. Or Command and G on the uh, Command Shift and G, Command Alt, Command Alt and G on the keyboard. Uh, you pick one. I'm just going to reduce the opacity, the saturation. Maybe something like, uh, like that is not bad. Cool, let's close that. We are getting their peeps. So the next thing is darkening the crap out of the grass here. So I think in the original one I used like 20 different curves just to darken and lighten and darken until I wasn't completely happy. So I'm going to do that quite quickly now. You may forgive me. So let's do something like that. And hit Command and I on the keyboard, then get the brush. And with an opacity of 40%, I'm going to be quite hard now. And probably with a color of that, that, that is so annoying. Go away, creative cloud. I do know I have updates. So, <laughs> and with the opacity of, what was that, 40%, I'll bring the darkness into the image, just like that. Even in the, in the sheep a little bit. 
okay and we're going to opacity of 10 percent also just a bit there and why not also a little bit into the clouds right there's still a bit too much brightness going on back here we don't necessarily need brightness if we're a fan of dramatic work as me okay cool and with an opacity of 20 percent i'll just continue to go over this area here until i feel like okay we are dark enough <laughs> something like that and let's go like this and that area here as well okay and i will do another curve adjustment and i'll go even darker to something like that maybe and i'm going to hit command and i and with a bit of a smaller brush and opacity of maybe 30 percent i'll just start to go over like very particular areas like here like there and there's a bit of bright spots right there and there's too much attention for me on these flower heads right here so let's just around them bring it down a little bit maybe like here as well okay well let's i think we can live with this one last thing one last curve it's getting getting weird let's get up with the brightness increase it and i'm going to invert that as well and you see where the grass has i'm going to zoom in to show you a bit more uh has these little brown or yellow patches or whatever that is so with an opacity of 20 percent and a white color i'll just bring back some of that brightness in that happy little grass okay just like that okay again rough job here take your time with these things fun enough good so now that we have done this there's one thing which i would like to do and why i can't say but i just want to do it and uh, that is taking a bit of the color out here so a bit of the green away and instead have a transition of a uh, let's say orange brownish color going from here back there okay so what i'll do i'll just create a new layer by hitting the new layer symbol down here or by hitting command alt shift and n on the keyboard which will also create a new layer i'm going to hit g on my keyboard which brings up my gradient tool again and I'm going to find a nice color just up here in the color palette, maybe something like that. And uh, I'll just drag it from top to bottom or from bottom to top. You know what I mean. And that was apparently the wrong mode. So what we want is color to, to background, something like that. And then something like that. Way better. <laughs> Way better, guys. So now you can experiment with these things a little bit. So either you can go to blending mode color or to blending mode hue. I forgot what I used, but I like the hue. Let's see what happens with the color. Uh, color is a bit too strong. Let's stick with hue. Hue is not bad at all. I kind of like that. If we feel like it's not strong enough, we can always duplicate it and it's going to get a little bit stronger. And I think I kind of like the feeling to this. So what we can do, we can select both of those. Uh, we're holding shift and just clicking on the, oh, well, the one below, I guess. And I'm going to hit command and G on the keyboard, which will pop them in one folder. Now I can apply a layer mask to that folder rather than having to apply a layer mask on each layer itself, right? So let's hit B, get the brush again. And let's remove it maybe with an opacity of 20% just from a little bit from the area with the sheep back here. Okay, something like that. And remember the color when we applied it was strongest at the bottom and went weaker the further we go towards the middle. So with 20% and fading out downwards, we should get a nice, nice fading effect. Okay, I like that actually a lot. That's not bad at all. Cool. Good. So what we can do now, now we can work a little bit on that sheep because uh, they're a bit too small and I would like to have them a bit larger if possible. <laughs> so one quick way to get these sheep a bit closer toward to the camera, right, is not to go back and ask them, but just to cut them out and resize them. So what you can do, or what I did at least, if I remember correctly, I created a new layer by hitting Command, Alt, Shift and N on the keyboard for new layer. Then I hit L on the keyboard to get my lasso tool. I'm going to do a very rough job now, but the principle applies. I'm going to uh, paint a selection just like that, that sheep, like here a bit maybe, and there, and like so, bam. So I make that selection, then I'm going to hit Command and J on the keyboard, which was the wrong order. So what we should have done instead, no problem, let's delete that new layer. I said delete that new layer, let's deselect and then delete that new layer. Hit Command, Alt, Shift and E on the keyboard for a stamp visible. Perfect. And now we're just going to do the same thing again. Um, we're just going to, yeah, let's, let's not do it. No, we do not want to have a new layer now. There is no need to do that. I had that wrong in my mind. I should be fired. Luckily, I'm not employed. Okay, so let's, <laughs> let's just use the last tool, cut them out by hitting Command and J on the keyboard. And that'll bring that selection, these sheep, onto a new layer. So if I hit V now, I can move these sheep basically around. All right. So what I want to do is hit Command and T, which will bring up my Transform tool. And then I can freely resize these guys, right? But obviously, I want to make sure that I resize them appropriately. So what I can do is I'm just going to hold Shift while I drag that around a little bit which will in the end make sure that I resize it proportionally to maybe something like this. 
Um, now we just have to find a place where we like this these sheep to be. And actually they blend in quite amazingly right here. So if I hit Command and H, or H in the original English language, then we hide the margins of the selection. And as you see, we have just made these sheep bigger. Oh, look at that. Bef oh, I can't. Okay, let's hit Enter. And we see before and after, and it's a little bit better. So, of course, there will be a little bit of edging going on right here, but there is no problem with that. Just create a layer mask, get your brush with an opacity of, I don't even know, maybe 70% or so. Let's try. <laughs> and then uh, just go over the edges right here and blend it in with the grass which is surrounding the funny little animals anyway. Okay, just like that. Okay, and so on and so forth. I mean, that's just an example. You know how that works by now, right? Cool. So now we have a little bit of bigger sheep, which is kind of nice. I like that. What else could we do? How about a nice little vignette? Uh, I kind of think that picture deserves the attention to be drawn towards the sheep. So let's do that. Let's create a new layer by hitting Command, Alt, Shift, and N on the keyboard. And then hit Shift and G to get the Shift and G, I said, to get the Paint Bucket Tool. Okay. So here's the, the grading tool. And if you hold Shift and G, you'll get the Paint Bucket Tool. And we want that. I'm going to select a nice color, something like black. I'm just going to darken out the whole image. Nice. Then I'm going to create a layer mask, which is white in this case. I'm going to hit M to get my marquee tool. I'm just going to draw something like meh, something like this onto my image. I'm going to hit Shift and Backspace, and I'll tell the thing, fill that with black, please. So now we have that, which is not exactly what we felt like, I guess. So what we can do, we can just hit Command and D to deselect that area. And now I'll go for a nice blur. So with that layer mask selected, I'll just go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Depending now on how much we want to blur that thing. Yeah, something. Maybe something like this. And we can always remember, just reduce the opacity and make it go away a little bit better. Maybe something like that. I like it on the edges. I'm not too big of a fan right here in the foreground, which is not an issue at all. We could also try to change its blending mode, maybe from, from uh, normal down to darken. How, how does that sound? Sounds exactly the same. All right, multiply maybe? Doesn't do anything. Great. <laughs> what happens if we go for soft light? Ooh, interesting. That works a bit better. Hard light? Hmm, that does weird things. Okay, and luminosity. Also, uh, I guess it could be worse. Well, that vignette failed a little bit, but that is the general idea how you can make one. Otherwise, you just go to filter, camera, raw filter, and do it right there. Good, so let's hit B on the keyboard and just get rid of the vignette a little bit in the foreground right here, because we don't need it, right? I kind of like a bit of a brighter, brighter area right there. And with an opacity of 50%, I'll just make sure that was far too much. I'll just make sure that we have definitely more brightness here. And in the sky, with 20%, I'm gonna reduce I'm gonna get rid of that vignette a little bit as well. Just a little bit right there. Okay. And especially here in that mountain region, right? We kind of want this to be visible. Cool. Looking good. So now I'm gonna go back and check if I did anything else, and then I'll be back in one second. And we're back, and as it turns out, there was just one more thing I did, apparently, yeah, which is to get rid of the noise in the clouds right here. I mean, if I zoom in deep enough, 120%, you see, holy crap, there's a lot of noise in here, right? Especially in this kind of area. But uh, not to worry, we're just going to create a stamp visible by hitting Command, Alt, Shift, and E on the keyboard. And then we're going to go to Filter, Camera, Raw, Filter. That's one way of getting rid of noise. There are many. But uh, that one is fast, so why wouldn't we not do that? Why wouldn't we? Why would we not do that? So let's go to noise reduction, increase the luminance slider right here, zoom in a little bit towards the clouds so that we can actually see what's happening. And once we are there, we can decide one uh, when we are happy. Maybe a bit more. Yeah. yeah maybe a bit up. Yes. Uh, maybe, maybe a bit more. Maybe a bit less. All right. That's not bad. That's just it. Okay. I kind of can live with that. And let's bring it through where necessary. So let's create a layer mask. If the computer has thought, conclude thinking, computer. Okay, thank you. Let's create a layer mask and go a little bit over. Invert that layer mask by hitting Command and I. And with an opacity of, say, 40% in the white color on my brush, I'll just bring back that noise reduction where I have the feeling it is really, really necessary, such as these areas right here, right? I mean, it's quite strong. We don't need it that strong. We could also go a little bit over the mountains if we feel like, but 
I mean, grain and mountains never is never an issue for me. Of course, there are mountains. They, they are allowed to be grainy, right? That's fine. Let them be grainy. Okay, cool. Now we have a bit of noise removal done, and we're happy people. And that is essentially all I did to work on that image, guys. No, I think in the original image I went a bit darker. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. If you did like the video, please do not forget to hit that thumbs up button and show your support. And also, if you haven't already, please do not forget to subscribe for more weekly Photoshop stuff and things. If you have any particular questions, just drop them either here in the comment section if you're on YouTube or somewhere on the blog. Or just contact me on the blog, because that's the easiest way to contact me. On the blog. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time. Bye!